the initial animation, pro the first animation project you should ever do is called rotoscoping. Okay, because rotoscoping, it really solves the problem of having to draw in a big white space because it fills it immediately for us. And rotoscoping is essentially just tracing images over time. And Disney, you know, in, in early 1950s animation, everything was rotoscoped, right? Disney rotoscoped constantly. Snow White, almost snow, almost all of Snow White was entirely rotoscoped. Um, Jiminy Cricket walking around was rotoscoped. Um, the fairy from Cinderella was rotoscoped. Pinocchio, rotoscoped. Peter Pan, rotoscoped. Uh, this is, you essentially put in a live action video and then just frame, frame by frame, you put a new layer on top of it and then draw on that layer. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use the photography of Edward Muybridge to make our rotoscopes. Okay. The Muybridge photographs are in the public domain. Okay. So anybody can use them. Okay. We've talked about Muybridge. We've talked about rotoscoping. You talk about the dangers of the great white canvas. I've shown some Disney examples from Snow White and Pinocchio. Um, and now I think we're ready to get into it. Okay. So you can see right now, maybe you can't see, I'm going to make my, I'm going to make my stuff a little bit bigger. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. So first thing we want to do is we're in draw mode automatically. And, and just to kind of see what you're doing, this is with my mouse. I'm drawing right here. Okay. Um, and if that looks like gray pencil, that's, that's okay. Um, you can see the strength is only at, at 0.6. I can bump it up to one and that makes it harder. This is a pencil. You can come over here and make a, a pen. Okay. And pens are a little bit thicker, obviously. Um, you can do uh, a rough pen so you can see that, you know, the line has a little character. That's always fun. Um, I encourage you to play around with all of these, but this is where you're going to select the thing we're going to draw with. Okay. I'm just going to control Z out of that because that's how you undo in blender is control Z is how we undo in blender. Okay. And, uh, I want to go over to object mode and I'm going to shift a to add a background image. Okay. Reference image, background image. There's subtle, there, there's subtle, uh, distinct differences and distinctions. Um, but, for, for what we're doing, it's really not that big of a deal. Then find the image. Okay. You can add a background image like this of the entire sequence. Okay. And then you can draw one and try and match it up. But if you do that, you're going to, you're going to realize that, you know, where do you stop the left side? Cause the image is a little longer than the actual, um, content in the frame and then here it's a little shorter and here one of them overlaps it's like which one so this is kind of a crapshoot if you're going for precision the easier way to do it and that's we are all about ease okay we're we're artists so we want the 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 laziest way to do this is to find the gif of the thing and just open up the gif in gimp the free and open source photo editing software, the general image manipulation program. And if you open up any GIF in GIMP, something really awesome like this happens. Okay. Look, it just gives you all the frames right here. Okay. It opens up. This is the GIF, but it's each frame is now a layer. Okay. And then you can export these one at a time. Now I have already done that as a gift to you. Um, so if you want to do the Buffalo, there is a, there's a link to each one of the frames in the description of this video. And, uh, so we're going to import those. Now I encourage you, if, if you're not going to do the Buffalo, I encourage you to take an extra six, seven minutes and find a GIF of the thing you want to rotoscope and open it up in GIMP, the GIF in GIMP. Okay. Say that 10 times fast and then just, uh, export it as a JPEG one frame at a time. And then we're going to import all those frames right now. And I'm going to create some space here so you can see that I'm going to delete this because I don't need it anymore. I don't want it anymore. 
Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to add some background images. Now you're going to want to do this one at a time. And I know that's tedious and I know it sucks, but you got to understand something. This does not enter as the name of the image. Okay. So right here, here, let me pull this out. Frame one, this empty is called frame one right here but not right here. So we're going to have to do this manually. Okay, frame one, and then we can close it. Then we come back to collection, image at reference image. See, empty, and then we're going to want to go frame two. Okay, and then if we click off it, you can see that he's moving forward. He's starting to move forward a little bit. Um, okay. And this, this is, this is going to take, and then we can, uh, we can even name this uh, collection and we'll call it Moybridge frames. Okay. Um, and then let's add another one. shift a reference. You can reference or background. Okay. There, there are subtle differences, but for what we're doing, we'll be okay. And the reason we want to name these, you can see that it puts it puts the most recently added image on top of the other frames. But when we name it correctly, it goes to its uh, to its proper spot. Oh man, I hope I'm recording. Yeah, cool. Okay, so you can see, and then we're just going to work our way down. Once we've added all of our frames one at a time, and uh, yeah, okay, it's going to take a minute. You can do it all at one time, but you're going to have to name them individually anyway. Um, unless you, you know, I'm sure there's probably a really fast way to do this in Python. But we don't know uh, Blender scripting yet. Okay. We're just not there yet. Okay. Six. Okay. Seven. Okay. Eight. Now, um, if you're new here, one thing that I, I don't even. Okay. This is what we're triggering here is adaptive recall. Do something, do it again, do it again, do it again, forget it, do it again, forget it, do it again, forget it, do it again. And uh, this is the only known method of learning anything at all. And, you know, obviously every now and again, make sure that you're, you're well, well, we'll do this at the end. Shift A at reference or background, either one. Okay, we're using for the same thing. But it pops in as an empty, so we need to change it to its correct frame. Frame 12. Okay, empty. We'll call it frame 12. And if we pumped all these in at the same time, and th this might not be, this might be why you can't, or at least I, I don't even know how to add a bunch of different reference images all at once. And it might be because they all go in as the name empty. So then you, you have to, you have to go in and change it for yourself. 13. Almost done here, 14, 15, and 16. There we go, frame 16. Okay, now let's just double check our work. Okay, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Outstanding. Okay, our frames are in play, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to go. And way more importantly, they're all they're all on top of each other, just ready to move. Okay, so all we have to do is is draw. If you're gonna use the the sheet, the one large sheet with all of the images um, side by side. That's just, that's an awesome challenge, and I salute you, um, brave and daring soul. Uh, we, however, are going to take the easy route. 
Okay. So now what I'd like to do, now that we have a collection of frames up here, you know what? Let's create a new collection. Bring this up here and we'll call this, we'll call this collection uh, Rotoscope because that's what we're doing. Roto Rotoscopes. Um, now let's shift A and add a grease pencil, a grease pencil blank. Okay, so now this says G pencil right here. That's great. It's exactly what we want. We got a layer right here. We got black right here. Um, so you you might have something different. If yours already has a stroke up here, cool, leave it. That's fine. This is I like putting this in because you can actually see where it says layer. Um, the default in the scene, it doesn't. It, it might say solid fill or dotted line or but what those well, all that those are. Our layers okay that's all this is and then you can click on material and we've given this we give us a black stroke right here okay um, and a stroke is a line and a fill obviously like if I were to here look I'm just gonna come to draw mode right here and if I were to oh I still have line selected right there so let's come up to draw we'll turn this we'll click on materials over here okay okay so if we bring this in here I'll bring this down and you can see we already have we got a keyframe here okay just this layer which I'm going to call I'm gonna call line layer okay line layer right here boop, boop. and then if you draw you can see and you say well that that's kind of faint yeah it is our radius is only five pixels long if we want to bump this up to 21 now we have a thicker line Okay, if you want to bump it up to 65, okay, now we have a dark line, okay, much thicker. This is uh, how you mess with the thickness of your line is in the radius. So I'm going to, okay, um, I've got the ink rough. I'm going to make this um, just the regular ink. But I don't like 60. Let's bring this down to call that 15. And then one thing, I want, again, I'm still using the mouse. I'm not using the uh, I'm not using the stylus yet. But see, you know, you're naturally going to have some hand wiggle right there. If you want to straighten that out, here I'll bump this up so you can see it. I've just bumped up my radius to the low 52. You can click. So here, there's this. Okay, watch. If I click stroke stabilize stroke so this is like if you have shaky hands turn stabilize stroke on and now it kind of you see it's just it kind of softens the edge right whereas before you were a little bit jagged now you're you're very smooth and you can bring this as high up or as low down as you out uh, 10 is is the default and 10 10 is 10 is fine you know unless you unless you want that um you know, that kind of rough look, in which case you should also probably be using the, the rough ink. And it's a buffalo, and buffaloes are a little rough. So, uh, yeah, let's have at it. I'm going to go rough pen with a uh, we'll do 20 radius and the stroke stabilized down to 10. Okay. All right. I am officially ready to draw. I have, I got all my layers in for my GIF. I'm ready to rotoscope. I know what rotoscoping is. I know who the father of uh, modern cinema is. I know that he crushed it. I know that he absolutely killed it um, in the world of photography. And he killed it in the world of men. Uh, the guy was a murderer, which is wild. Um, I understand a little bit about what grease pencil is. We've uh, explained the interface, how to get stuff in, how to move stuff, manipulate stuff, and draw stuff. We are ready to roll in the next one we are going to rotoscope this whole son of a gun so if you're ready to walk right into that go ahead i'm going to get up and uh, make myself a cup of iced coffee and then i'm going to come right back to the computer and record part two of this uh gentle introduction to the grease pencil and blender and uh and i'll see you in a bit if, if you made it this far uh thanks i appreciate that i appreciate you and um, and hopefully we, we we make something something wonderful. So I'll see you in the next one.